This video shows how to control semaphore and two aspect signals with Heathcote Electronics Air Dash 3. It includes interlocking with points, isolation of track and block occupation. We built this demonstration track to show how semaphore and colour light signals are automatically controlled by the Air Dash 3. The signal changes to clear when the Air Dash 3 EW is told the train is approaching and returns to danger when the Airdash 3 EW detects the train. Our demonstration controls two signals using one Air.1 EW and two Airdash 3 EWs. When the train is detected by the Airdash 1 EW, it is the yellow wire from Terminal 2 which tells the Airdash 3 EW the train is entering its block section. This sets the signal to clear. It also lights the yellow LED whilst the train is in the block section. These yellow LEDs can be mounted on a track diagram so they will light as trains move around your layout. The yellow wire from Terminal 2 of the Airdot 1 EW connects to Terminal H of the Airdot 3 EW. The second yellow wire from Terminal J is activated when the Airdot 3 EW detects a train. Terminal J connects to Terminal H of the second Airdash 3 EW to tell it the train is approaching. If you have an oval track, then you need one Airdash 3 or Airdash 3 EW for each signal. Because as we have shown, each Airdash 3 or Airdash 3 EW on detecting a train both moves its signal to danger and tells the next Airdash 3 or Airdash 3 EW the train is approaching. For a signal controlling the exit from a siding or bay platform, a push button switch can be used instead of the Airdot 1 EW. The push button switch is connected to terminals 0V and H. When you are ready for the train to depart, you press the push button switch to set the signal to clear. When the train reaches and is detected by the Airdash 3 or Airdash 3 EW, the signal returns to danger. To interlock the signal with the points, cut one of the push button switch wires and connect the two ends to the point motor contacts. Suppose there is a point after the signal and it is wrongly set and will derail the train. As the train approaches, the signal needs to stay at danger. This is achieved by wiring terminal I of the Airdash 3 EW to contacts on the point motor. For this demonstration, these contacts are represented by a switch. When the switch is closed, connecting terminal I to terminal 0V, the signal will remain at danger. However, the Airdash 3 EW knows the train is in the block section and lights the yellow train in section LED. When the points change, e.g. the contacts open, the signal changes to clear. As well as interlocking with points as we have shown, Terminal I allows connection to a manually operated switch or to the next block section up the line. You can connect points, switches and block sections all at the same time into Terminal I. In other words, you can wire the Airdas 3 and the Airdas 3 EW so that the points must be correctly set and the next block section must be empty before the signal will change to clear. Terminal K is the block section occupied terminal. Like the yellow LED, it is active when there is a train in the block section. Terminal K of the second Airdash 3 EW is wired to Terminal I of the first Airdash 3 EW with the orange wire. This connection stops the semaphore signal changing to clear if there is a train in the next block section. The engine moves through the first block section and enters the second block section. The second block section is now occupied. Whilst the second block section is occupied, the semaphore signal will stay at danger for approaching trains. As soon as the second block section is empty, the semaphore moves to clear and the train can move off. You can take this a stage further and have the train automatically stop if the signal is at danger. As this diagram shows, you need two isolation brakes in the track. 
The rail between these brakes is switched on and off by terminals D and E. In the diagram is a diode. This is only fitted for DC. It allows trains running in the reverse direction to cross the isolation section. This automatic stopping can be used to prevent collisions at junctions, as well as Terminal K telling the previous block section there is a train ahead. It can also be wired to dash series on other conflicting lines, so they stop trains that might collide at the junction. If a train runs in reverse, the signals will be left at clear, because the dash 3 w receives the train detections in the wrong order. The solution is to use the ADAS3 or ADAS3EW's Terminal G. Both Terminal G's are wired to this switch with the pink wire and the switch connects them to the Note V terminal with the black wire. Now, with the switch thrown, both signals stay at danger. The second use of Terminal G is when a train has moved out of the block section into a siding. To tell the AirDAS 3 ew its block section is now empty, you can either connect an AirDot 1 in the siding to Terminal G, or wire a switch to Terminal G. We now explain how everything is powered, how the infrared detection works, and how to connect to the signals. This demonstration uses two AirDAS 3 ews and one AirDot 1 ew these plus the two signals are all powered from one of our 12 volt, 1 amp power supplies. The power supply wire with the faint white stripe is positive and connects to the red wires. The plain black wire is negative. The red wire connects to the plus terminal of the AirDAS 3 EWs and the black wire to the Note V terminal. The red wire connects to terminal 1 of the AirDot 1 EW and the black wire to terminal 6. Don't worry if you accidentally connect the power supply wires the wrong way around. Nothing is damaged but the boards do not function. Always unplug the power supply whilst wiring, as accidentally touching the live wire onto a circuit board will probably damage it. The emitter and detector are held together by parcel tape and secured in the hole between the sleepers with plasticine. The red LED lights when a train is detected and extinguishes when the train has gone past. We have plugged the power in and are testing the detection is working by running a train and checking the red LED's light. The ADAS-3 detects trains by infrared detection Beneath the heat shrink is an emitter and detector. The emitter and detector fit in a hole between the sleepers with the circuit board under the baseboard. This is double O gauge track, but the detection also works with N gauge or Z gauge. When the engine reaches the ADAS-3, its underside reflects the infrared back onto the ADAS-3's detector. The detection works without any modification to the rolling stock. The long leg of the LED fits into terminal M and the short leg into terminal Note V. The LED's resistor is built into the board. If you wish, you can wire the LED to your control panel. There are two versions of the ADAS-3. The standard version with the emitter and detector attached and the ADAS-3 EW with the emitter and detector at the end of 18 inch wires. This white box is a relay. Inside the relay are two switches, one to control the signal and the other to isolate the track. The switches are moved by an electromagnet inside the relay. This throws both the switches when the signal changes. The three lugs on the switch correspond to terminals A, B and C on the ADAS-3. The centre lug of the switch is the common. So to demonstrate this I will connect a two aspect colour light signal to a switch, and then transfer the wires from the switch to the ADAS-3. Pushing the switch into a block of plasticine holds it steady while soldering. The ADAS-3 will operate common negative or common positive LED signals, or work with bulb signals. Ensure you are using a resistor with LED signals. The positive from the power supply goes to the centre lug, 
and the red and green wires from the signal to the two after lugs. The signal wiring for the AirDAS 3 will be identical. As it's a common negative signal, the common wire from the signal goes to the minus of the power supply. There's also a red and green wire out of the signal. The red wire goes to C and the green wire goes to A. The common for the switch or the ADAS3 is the positive from the power supply which goes to B. So B either switches its power through to A or to C to get a green or a red signal lit. The signal can have a separate power supply or if the power supply is 12 volts DC the signal and the ADAS3 can share the same power supply. This shows the switch which aligns up with the terminals A, B and C on the AirDAS 3. Don't forget the resistor. I've connected the AirDAS 3 to the same power supply as the signal and switch. I'm now going to remove the wires from the switch one at a time and connect them to the AirDAS 3. This is a positive wire and it goes to terminal B. green wire goes to terminal A and the red LED wire goes to terminal C. Now I'll switch the power on. The signals at red will make a train approach, it goes to green and now when the train passes the signal and reaches air dash 3, back to red. A good way to operate a semaphore signal is to use a servo motor. The servo motor has a moving arm and this arm can be linked to the arm of the semaphore signal with some piano wire. The servo motor needs a control board. This is our single servo controller board. It is operated manually with an on off switch. To give automatic control of the semaphore signal, the servo controller can be wired to the internal switch of the ADAS 3. The two orange wires can be connected to either A and B or B and C. The train approaches the signal and the servo moves it to clear. The train passes the signal and it is detected by the ADAS3 and the servo returns the signal to danger. If you want your signal to bounce, you can use our bouncing semaphore controller with the ADAS3. Again, instead of wiring to an on-off switch, you wire to terminals A and B or B and C. The earlier DAPL signal, which uses a push button switch, requires the AirDAS DSS to operate it. Apart from the signal connections and the absence of the ability to isolate the track, its operation is identical to the AirDAS 3. The later DAPL semaphore signals use a single throw double pole switch, so they can be connected directly to the AirDAS 3. In summary, any signal that is operated by an on off switch or a single pole double throw switch can be operated automatically by Heathcote Electronics AirDAS 3. I hope you see that the AirDAS 3 allows you to replicate signalling very realistically. However, if you prefer a simpler way to have working signals, we have the AirDot 3D and Mass Sequencer. Our Mass Sequencer and AirDAS 4 boards also work 3 and 4 aspect signals.